Welcome to another edition of Parents Canada Talk Radio on News Talk Saga 960. I am one host, Jason Thompson, with the other host. Lisa Durante. Hi, Lisa. How's it going this week? Good. How are you? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, it's that first time, you know, that first month. So all the kids are coming home with all the stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and so we're, we're picking it all up, which is, is fun. All Got the it. germies, yes. <laughs> You think, you know, after a while, you'd build up a, an immunity no. to it. It's been so many kids so long. No, they, they no, invent no, a no. new illness every single, yeah. oh my goodness, every single year. So, yeah. big week in parenting. How's it going for you? For me, it's going pretty well. So all the curriculars started up last week, which ties well with uh, what we're talking about today and with our guest. Um, but one of the things I do want to chat about is just time, because extracurriculars take so much of our time, and time is so precious. Um, and it's like it's an unrenewable resource. There's no way to make up the time as much as we wish that we could. Um, and. I have been doing a lot of reflecting over the last little bit, uh, really taking a look at my time because as I've been sharing, not only did I not have a nanny, um, but there's just been a lot of struggles with my time on how do I how do I manage all the balls that are up in the air. Um, and one of the things I do as a working parent consultant, working with working moms, is really taking a look at where are your priorities, what are your goals, and how are you using your time. And so I've kind of been taking my own advice and have decided, you know, to to really take an audit of my time and I've realized that some of the work that I've been doing hasn't been driving towards my priorities and goals and so I've had to make some hard decisions and one of them is that today will be my last uh, on-air show on uh, for Parents Canada Talk Radio. Uh, really tough decision to make for that but just wanted to share that with the audience and um, you of course knew that Jason. But, I, I did yeah. but I gotta tell you I was awfully sad because yeah. you know one of the things is, is, is uh, one of the things that's great about the show is that we play off against each other mm-hmm. and, and, and I find I, I'll be honest with you, I find I'm a better parent today than I was three months ago, really, by listening to you and the way that we've really interacted with the guests. So, first of all, I want to wish you all the best. I, I hope we can coax you to come back and visit as a, maybe a yeah, guest. Yeah, so yeah. Doing, yeah, sitting in the seat would be great every you, now and then. It's funny. When people ask me, you know, hey, what's your what's your co-host like? And the first word that always comes out of my mouth is super duper smart. So, like, oh, I, I, that you. really <laughs> helps me because I, I have someone who I can generate another perspective. So. Mm-hmm. You can't generate time. You found a you way to, to get some yeah. time. You go, and really, you know, to drive your personal brand, but also to be, you know, a uh, mom, mm-hmm. which is good. Yeah, and that, that's a big part of it. You know, anytime uh, working moms struggle with that so much that how do you be the mom that you want to be, but yet still fulfill your professional goals? And how do you spend your time doing that? And so it's always tough. And there's, the, there's I think, a place that we share. You know, I, I'm unique, you know, I, in that I, I run my own a couple of businesses and things like that. And really, my, my job is afternoons, where moms are really mornings by and mm. large. And so it's that whole, whole way of of dealing with with all of that because you know extracurriculars all started last week or the week before yeah like, okay, it's, it's all blending together now yeah, um, yeah, yeah yeah I do a lot of well I do most of the mornings and then a lot of the evenings so it's it's that's a to lot it out. yeah that is a lot mm-hmm. um, my week uh, yeah, as parenting so. you know it's I find this is the most important time of the year with the kids because oh. I find that three weeks in to school and extracurriculars is the time where you start to see the exhaustion mm-hmm build up. Agree, yeah. And so it becomes really important. So I got one in high school, right? So the, the key is, you know, she was going to a high school. She wasn't really bought into the fact that, you know, she was going to be living more time with her mom in a brand new high school and giving up her social social atmosphere. Of course, you know, the kid in, in like a day makes nine friends and she has voice class every day. And I actually just saw a video mm-hmm. last night of her first uh, her first exam uh, in in voice, and it was oh. it was goosebump inducing and ninety seven. Again, it's not that's the uh, it's not the grade that's most important because what mm-hmm. we talked about afterwards was that idea of how she got there, you know, how she managed to rehearsal and what she's going to yeah. work on going forward. So that was good. Mm-hmm. And then the other side, I've got the one who doesn't uh, take my calls. 
uh, he's in university, and so <laughs> he's I'm, too good I'm of like, a time. He's like, well, that's the thing. He's not go. I'm like, so what are you doing? What are you doing with your uh, uh, spare time? Which of course he laughs because he's in class 38 hours a week, and there's a commiserate amount of homework. Um, but I get these little little text secrets from him once in a while. Like today we're working on crystalline structures, and then that's it. I won't hear from him for a day. So I think he actually is really taking to the academic side of the university. And you know, Dad, right before before he went, I was like, oh no, what's going to happen? Is he going to mm-hmm. drown in the stress? So now I have a new thing to worry about, which is, oh no, is he getting the full university experience and is he joining clubs and he has to go into co-op and those? So there's always something to worry about. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think this is the time where you know I really put my ears on and make them as big as possible so that I can understand where they are and uh, you know where their joy is coming from and mm-hmm. what they need. And a big part of that comes down to, to extracurriculars. Yeah. And there's yeah. a lot of talk about extracurriculars versus over scheduling. That's what we're gonna talk about this week. Yeah, there, there is there's so much there, there's so many benefits to over curriculars and, and there there's studies that are I think out you there. Over curriculars, sorry, oh, interrupt. Extracurriculars. Thank you. Um because it is it's over scheduling at times and I know that I've been guilty of that. Uh, and so it's really you know there are a lot of benefits on what it can do for a child. But then there are those drawbacks. Um, I'll tell you, so last year I I put my children in a lot of extracurricular activities um, because I just find that those activities help round out a child. So it rounds out the school curriculum and all of that. And so it kind of just rounds them out. And so they were in some sports, they were in piano, they were, they were in this math club. And so they were kind of doing a whole bunch of things. Um, and then it was probably mid-year <laughs> when one of the, the sports kind of went, um, She it was kind of just a once a week thing. It turned into a three times a week thing. Um, and I started noticing all of these um, side effects. Like she was really grumpy. Um, she was overly anxious. Uh, she didn't want to have fun. Um, and then we were missing out on family dinners, which is a very important thing right. for us. Uh, there were just so many things. And so those side effects, that's when, you know, I kind of, I realized I'm like, okay, I've overdone it this year. I've got to correct. And so this year we've totally scaled back. They're da- just in two curriculars, extracurriculars, um, and um, hoping that that's going to be better. <laughs> All I can do is hope. Um, How do you choose them? How do you make, know what the right choice for them is? Or- uh, well, now they're they're nine and eight, so right. they're making the choice. Before I, and even last year, I just was like, no, you need to do piano because you need to have an artistic. <laughs> there has to be some art in your life. Uh, you need to do this because whatever. Um, but this year, it very much was, you know, they love swimming. Do you want to continue that? Yes. And then they really enjoy math. Uh, so we've put them in this math club, which is a new math club, and it's a bit intensive, but we're gonna we're gonna figure it out, and that's it. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. That's really yeah, interesting. Yeah. I, you know, I actually had a one hour conversation with one of the moms this morning on extracurriculars, how it works, how you negotiate driving, you know, where dinner mm-hmm. comes from, and things like that. And one of the interesting things that I heard this morning was the idea that one of the kids wants to join cadets. And uh, it was interesting because what mom said was, I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about that because he's an arts kid, right? And I, uh-huh. I'm, uh, I want to say, you know, you can like two different things. Like it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a possibility, yeah, yeah. which course. kind of opens the door to, for, I have a really fraught relationship with how I understand and how I've kind of looked at extracurriculars over the years. Okay. Part of it was driven by the kids, right? So again, the kid who's in university had zero interest in ever doing any type of extracurricular whatsoever. I And so uh, with that in mind, I enrolled him in basketball, <laughs> kid who has no interest in sports whatsoever. <laughs> okay. And, you know, I, I, it was because I felt the pressure around me that, well, he needs to get physical exercise, so let's enroll him in something. Yeah. And, you know, by the so I remember the first game, we go to the first game, he's the tallest kid on the team, right? So the coach is like, great, I have this tall kid. And on the other team, there's this massively tall kid who, you know, I think aspires to be in the NBA, my kid who has never pretty much touched a basketball <laughs> and with the, the coach expecting and turned them inside out right you know over the course of the season I think they were very generous generous in uh, the score sheet to say that he scored two points for the entire season <laughs> and and he hated it he hated every single second of it but I will give him credit in that he, he kind of saw it through oh, he did okay so when he was you know kind of in that 15 15- Year, you know, I would come to him and I'd say, "Hey, there's a, there's a Roblox thing, or there's a Minecraft thing, or and it just zero. In, it was really like pulling teeth. And mm-hmm. then I got this idea, which was, I said, "Okay, you know, if I'm going to spend three hundred dollars on a camp for you, 
what do we do? Why don't we do this? I need something. I need something technology driven that you're kind of interested in. I'll give you the 300 bucks if you do it. So what happened was he essentially created his own camp, which was I had him program Amazon Echo Skills. So if you if you have an Alexa and you say, Alexa, I'm writing a speech. I'm sure there's ones going off all over the GTA right now. <laughs> it, Alexa will say, that's great. Here's a question I can. So he actually taught himself all of this stuff. And with our guest today, Very I actually cool. mentioned that. And she said, see, you know, the, the idea of a an extracurricular doesn't actually have to be outside the home, which I, mm-hmm. it blew my mind. Like I was just yeah, like, yeah, wait yeah, that, a that's second. That's a new, new perspective for me. And wow. I, it's a, it's great because when I look, you know, in my house, I have a little artistic studio and Lego building room and that sort of stuff in the house. And I'm just constantly replenishing it with paints and stuff like that. And so mm-hmm. I have one who's making slime and she created uh, not too long ago. She, we were at, um, a carrot fest in Bradford and she saw somebody had like a little pop-up shop for carrot slime. fest did I carrot hear that fest. right okay yes it, here's something you might not know that <laughs> okay. most of the carrots that you see in Canada come from a handful of farms on the Holland Marsh it's a true wow. story yeah. okay. so we have carrot fest so there somebody was selling slime and you know a week later you know Addie was out there actually with the uh, the lemonade stand and the slime on it and that's sort of, and she sold six I couldn't believe it just on the, the little residential street we live on wow. it's great but again that's kind of an extracurricular really mm-hmm. good Kind of yeah. in- inventing all of those all of those pieces run. Yeah, yeah. When I was when I was growing up, I, other than soccer in the summer, I wasn't really in extracurriculars at all. Uh, but just following on what you were saying, but I had jobs. Um, you know, my mom was a hairdresser, and um, she would at times, if it was a PA day or a day in the summer, she would bring me to the salon she worked at. And while it, this is not child labor at all um you know she allowed me the freedom to go off and play and all that but there would be times where she'd be like can you grab the broom and and sweep up you know the hair um and and i remember i loved every minute of it It gave me purpose and it just i wasn't bored Uh, i really enjoyed it and then when i got older i was able to go to the place where my dad worked and I was able to do filing and I thought it was like the coolest thing to be able to photocopy. Um, But again, getting my breaks and all that, because again, no child labor. (laughs) I just don't want anybody in the audience to think that. (laughs) What do you think that is? So like, it's interesting, you know, I come from a kind of a lower level socioeconomic background, so Mm -hmm. we couldn't really afford hockey and things like that. So extracurriculars were never on the agenda. I do remember like when I was in high school, for example, we didn't have a high school newspaper. So I created one. I actually developed Mm -hmm. a high school newspaper my high school because I, I thought I wanted to be a writer years later I would come to realize no 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 no. you want to be an entrepreneur writing is just one canvas that you use and this is an example of how you kind of went out there and did that mm. so but I, I it's, it's interesting how the pendulum has swung so hard for extracurriculars <laughs> and, and what they mean and why why parents feel that they're so so important yeah I think there's pressure um, if I'm remembering back to when my kids were really young, there was just this pressure that, you know, and I have two girls. And so ballet was one of them. I am not, I did, I like I said, no extracurricular, so I did not do dance. So I had no connection to it. But the moms in the community and the moms that I was, you know, uh, connecting with online, you know, dance was a big one that, that kids should be in. So I put my older child in and she did not take to it at all. She just, it was hilarious. But she didn't take to it, and her in a tutu is just still laughable. Um, Because she's just such a tomboy, and it was just such an opposite of what she was, and she didn't enjoy it. It didn't bring out the best in her. Uh, And so the next year, we we had to... um, you know, take her out of it because it just wasn't serving her. And so I think there's just a lot of pressure and that's why we're putting, you know, our kids in there. Um, but we're talking next to Louise Gleason. Louise Gleason. Just wanted to make sure I said her yeah, yeah. name right. She said, and she's got a really interesting perspective on, yeah. on like, just, I, I'm, I'm going to, spoiler alert, she entirely changed the way that I think about really? extracurriculars. Like, yeah, just I, in a 25 that. minute conversation, my jaw was on the floor the entire time. Well, one of the things that I'm, so she's a journalist and a blogger, but she's a mom of four, and I, I, I have two, and I'm struggling. <laughs> So I would love to know how she is handling four different schedules, if they're all four different schedules, um, and how all of that is happening. Um, yeah, so it would. It, we want to hear from you if you want to join the conversation on your thoughts about extracurricular activities, how it may be impacting your life and your family. So join us on social media, all of them, at Parents Canada. Or you can give us a call here in the studio, 416-640-0200. We'll be back with more from Parents Canada Radio. Radio on News Talk Saga 960.
Hello and welcome back to Parents Canada Talk Radio on Saga 960. So I'm very excited. We have a guest with us today, Jason. Uh, her name is Louise Gleason and she uh, is on the line. Hello, Louise. Good morning. Hey, how are you? Good. That's good. So you are a Canadian freelance writer. I took a look at your website and you are prolific. Yeah, we're, in, <laughs> we're envious. Yeah, it is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you began your career writing in, health, in the health and science area, really leveraging your biomedical science background. But then you've kind of, as you've had children and your personal interests have grown, you've kind of shifted um, into really talking and writing about family life and parenting. Um, and I understand that you've recently had a Washington Post article. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. Congratulations. That's Thank a big you. one. I mean, kids have a way of kind of moving in and taking up all your brain cells, right? So <laughs> <laughs> I felt like that's all I thought about anyways. Might as well put it into words. That's great. Yeah. So we are talking about extracurricular activities today. And Jason and I at the top of the show, were just chatting about our different viewpoints. And I understand that you helped change his mind a little bit when he Ooh, he's back and he spoke more. with you. So tell me, tell me a bit, tell me about that. Tell me about, you know, I, I know, I think what I, I said yesterday was the philosophy that you put around extracurriculars, but really the question is why, why do you subscribe to so many extracurriculars and why do you think they're important? Um, I think when we were chatting briefly yesterday, it was it started out as a mission that I was on to make sure that my kids knew that I saw them as individuals. Um, as I explained to you, I had four kids in seven years, mm -hmm. and they kind of get parented like a great big block, right? <laughs> and I and I thought, you know, you're you're actually so different from one another, and how how can I show you that I see that in you, and that I celebrate that about you? Mm -hmm. And I can't do it on my own. I needed to farm it out. I needed I needed help with that, <laughs> and so I really kind of looked for things that spark joy for that individual child. I couldn't meet those needs every single day. I was just surviving at that point, but I could hand them over to someone who shared that joy too and foster that you know outside of our home and and what do you you know you use this phrase filling your bucket which we we know as adults but for kids you almost never think about it mm -hmm. for, for kids is is that you know you're really trying to you know understand who they are through yeah. the extracurriculars and fill their bucket can you talk a little bit about that i basically wanted to show my kids that i see them right i see you and i know you Mm -hmm. And I know you're not, I know you don't like all the same things as your big brother does. And if I don't know you yet, I want to know you more. So I want to spark your curiosity. I want to show you that I believe in you. And, and I want you to feel like you can explore anything you want to explore. And I'm going to help you do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that whole uh, seeing them, I think that's so important because, yeah. you know, one of the questions that Jason had asked me was, you know, how do I decide which curriculars to put, extracurriculars to put my kids in? Um, and it really is about what what fits for them. There have yeah. been times in the past where I've pressured my kids to do dance, for example, even though they're not dance kids. Um, or I've put them in gymnastics and because their friends were in it, so let me put them in. It'll be good for their social um, social relationships. Um, um, but how do you how do you find those things? Like, what is it that parents should be looking for, especially when their kids are really young? On um, which ones to put them into? I mean, first of all, we should cut ourselves some slack about making those mistakes, and I'm mm -hmm. going to put that in air quotes. Yeah, um, I've done the same thing. I've put my kid in a gymnastics class because she was so far behind the other kids on the playground with keeping up, and it wasn't her thing. But I, I'm not going to feel bad about it because yeah. now we know mm -hmm. that wasn't her thing. Yeah, you know, moving on. And, and she knows it's not her thing. And, and we came to the end of the session and we both mutually decided, you know, hey, that was a thing, but we're, we're moving on to something else and it's okay. Um, when they're young, uh, it's basically, as I said to Jason, um, word of mouth, right? Uh, I can't know everything about everything. And um, talking to other parents and, and asking what they're doing with their children was, is my number one source for finding mm. unique opportunities. It still is to this day. Um, I will admit I apply my journalistic uh, sleuthing abilities at times to find <laughs> kind of off the beaten path things. I had shared yesterday, too, that I found an architecture class for my teenage son. Um, oh, that's uh, cool. Most people don't do that with their kids. Mm. I, I typed it in. I said, you know what? Is there something out there? And what do you know? There was. It's in Mississauga, actually. Mm. Um, and I said, you know, are you willing to try? Are you willing to try? Because I see that you really enjoy doing that. Your teacher um, shared with me in grade nine that you really seem to have an aptitude and you enjoy it in class. Would you like to continue exploring that outside school? 
because in school you're done that credit and you're not going to get a chance to do it again. And he was like, yeah, I, I would like to do that. Yeah. You know, sometimes it just pops up organically. And, and I think, you know, really having a relationship with their teachers and asking what, what they're seeing mm-hmm. in my child, too. I got to tell you, I got off the phone with you yesterday you and, I, I, and I thought to myself, you know what? I need to find something cool. So immediately <laughs> I went and I found out the uh, Art Gallery of Ontario runs a sculpting class. Yes, and I have, I have this little one who just loves, loves, loves. And I'm like, there could be something there that could be a lot of fun. And yeah, so, yeah. yeah, we signed up for it. So thanks for that. that but I, yeah, I love that so idea. Awesome. And you know what? Lots of art galleries have the most amazing, amazing classes. And a lot of them are one, one day workshops like bullet journaling for teenage girls. Come on. Like, <laughs> no, really. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every I may want to take that class. How to deal feelings, right? And here they have these drop in, like, one day workshop classes. I, I had her grab a friend, you know, and she's still at it, but on her own time. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I don't yeah. have to drive her there. I don't have to supervise it. It sparked her curiosity. It gave her the tools to get started, and she's gone running with it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bullet journaling, architecture, any others <laughs> that you want to share with us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are awesome. So one of the things you say is that extracurricular activities, and I, I fundamentally believe this too, that it really helps kids get to know themselves. So yeah. uh, my daughter, she, the older one, she just, she's not great at the typical sports that are offered through school, you know, running and things like that, um, or, or volleyball or whatever the sports may be. But we have found swimming and she is a fish in water. And so she she's really learned more about herself. And, and so how can you talk a little bit more about that on how that they can help kids really discover who they are and their strengths? I mean, I think, uh, to your point, I have a household of non-athletic kids, too. Um, mm-hmm. My kids were the ones whose gym teacher sent the ball home as homework so I could whip <laughs> it at their head, you know, because they were running in the other direction every time the ball went up. I mean, they're never going to be aggressive team sport players. But like yours, we sought out sports that were individual. So the only person they're competing with is themselves. And they're still outside and they're still engaging in outdoor activity or physical movement but maybe they're doing that with myself or their dad where they feel safe you know and there's there's no competitiveness involved because that that did not spark joy in my kids they are not um hungry for competitiveness and aggressive play and it's just not their style and so there are alternatives out there Mm -hmm. you mentioned that idea of competitiveness and we talked about this a little that idea that sometimes parents enroll their kids into specific things out of a competitive spirit for the parent. Are you seeing that? Do you see that? Oh, I see that everywhere. Um, It's been something that I I work really hard to keep out of our mindset. There is no finish line in what we're doing here. We're figuring ourselves out. We're understanding ourselves. Um, There's no timeline. There's no end point. It's a journey. It's a process. It's an experience, and that's it. We don't need you to be the best. We don't need you to win. We just need you to be happy doing what you're doing. See, see, Lisa, isn't that Louis, awesome? I, I, that there's no finish line. I'm going to have to take no that. Line. I love that. I, I can't tell you how much I love that <laughs> um, because yeah. that, that's what it is. It's all about um, really finding yourself and discovering and building um, on your own. But you know, you did say that the whole idea of um, you know, it's not it's not for me. Sometimes there are things you're going to put your kid in, yeah. and it's not for them. You know, I I just automatically put my kids into soccer every summer. They've never asked to be put into soccer, but I do it. Um, and this uh, this past this past summer, my daughter turned to me at one of the games. She's like, "Mommy, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to quit." <laughs> I mean, oh, you yeah, make me cry. <laughs> yeah, and, and so I was like, "Oh goodness me!" So, what what, what are your thoughts about quitting um, activities? Um, we we see it as a learning opportunity, just to understand showing up for things that you're responsible for. So, acknowledging that you know you're not loving this, and mm-hmm. I'm not loving seeing that you're struggling with it. Mm-hmm. But your your team needs you to get to the end of the season, and I'm going to support you in whatever way. I can to help you get there, but know that it's coming to an end and that I support you Mm -hmm. in in closing this chapter. And we're going to get there together. Yeah, I, I... I, I didn't say it as eloquently as you, but I, I just, uh, I, I felt, I gave her a hug and I was like, can you just finish? Um, yeah. and, and so she did. What and kind of response did you get? Like, how did they, like in the moment, like what is that, you know, because some parents will see the tears and then they'll just kind of break down. Like, there how there do you actually get wasn't tears. That's... It was just, it was a very logical 
well argued yeah. statement that and so she positioned it as she's like I really love swimming and every time I go to swim practice I love it I love yeah. being in the pool and so she gave, she compared it and she said I feel I, like myself when I'm at swimming yeah. yeah and she said I do not love this at all <laughs> but you know what Lisa kudos to you because she felt safe in articulating that to you mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. so it was. Uh, so she she will never be put back into soccer again unless she yeah. asks me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting. But you know what? Like, uh, I might touch again. I might circle back and say, but you know what? Soccer helps you be better at swimming. It gave you cardio practice every week, strengthened your leg muscles. I mean, everything is not for naught, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she's made some great friends, so that's exactly. good too. There's that also that idea, you know, the the popular concept of flow, right? That idea of really trying to find out that thing that is going to distract your child. And we do it as adults well, like that they can just lose themselves in mm-hmm. because that does demonstrate the pathways out of the traditional non-extracurriculars, traditional curriculars in the curriculum of school so that you can kind of broaden that perspective yeah. and put amazing things in front of them. I mean, because we ask our kids to sit for eight hours a day mm-hmm. and, and meet the checklist, right? Like get in your box and then we're going to throw down a piece of paper in front of you and we're going to check, 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 check. Did you meet the curriculum requirements? Did you do it the way we expect you to learn? Did you display it the way we wanted you to? I mean, great. Okay. So that's all a part of growing and learning. And obviously there's 30 kids in the class and there has to be some order, but I kind of want the out of school hours to be where their wild, wild hearts take over, you know, do things your way. I think that's another show. Did you did you learn the way they wanted you to learn? Mm-hmm. I have many opinions about that one. <laughs> yeah, but it's a necessity. If we send our kids to public school, I don't. I'm not. I'm not slagging that at all. I understand there has to be order to the chaos, um, and so yes, you'll go to school and do your best to, to do that. But outside of school, I want to see how you like to learn, and and I want to support you in that. That's great, Louise. Mm-hmm. We are we need to take a break, but we'd yep. love for you to hang around because we've had some questions or thoughts sure. from uh, from people on social media. So yeah. hang around, hang around. In the meantime, everyone, I want to keep the the conversation going. We want to hear your stories and your thoughts around extracurricular. So hit us up at Parents Canada. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Four one six. Six four zero zero two hundred. You are listening to Parents Canada Radio on News Talk Saga nine hundred and sixty. It's Parents Canada Talk Radio. We are talking about over over scheduling versus extracurriculars. And I, mm-hmm. I, Luis has done such a good job on reframing that conversation where it doesn't even feel like like that anymore. Certainly, you know, and you know, Lisa, that my number one thing that I, I work with on my kids is sleep, the importance of sleep. Mm-hmm. And they see me like from a modeling perspective that I spend a lot of time, I work a lot, a lot, right? And But I make sure that eight hours of sleep is the where I begin because in order to do that, I can, I can work a lot because I love it all. Like I'm not working because I have to, I, I work because it's just such an enjoyable enjoyable experience, so, which comes back, I guess, to the whole idea of extracurriculars. This is a polarizing issue. People have lots and lots of questions. I know you're getting some stuff mm-hmm. on social media. I was. Yeah, I've been getting stuff on social media. So, Louise, one of the things that I had put out a poll asking, uh, you know, my followers uh, on Instagram, and I'm at Lisa.Durante, and so it was like, the question was, do extracurricular activities wreak havoc on your schedule? So really asking the parents that. And right now we're at 50-50. So um, 50-50 are saying that. And one of the questions that came through was around mealtime. And so one of the moms, I don't know the age of her children or, or very much about her, but she, what she said was that there is pressure to have, to put your kids into extracurricular activities. That there's all these studies that it's good for them. But then there's this pressure that we have to have family meals together and there's a conflict there. Like you can't have both oftentimes. And so, um, and I know that I, I experienced that last year. So what say you around mealtime and how can we kind of do both? Um, this is going to sound really like <laughs> deeply philosophical about the family dinner. But um, I believe uh, dinner is a feeling, not a time on the clock. Ooh. Say so, more. Yeah, say more. Say more. <laughs> you know, I think we get caught up in the regiment of, of needing to sit down at a particular time and everybody kumbaya around the table and holding hands, and that's not the model I grew up with. I don't feel I was shortchanged. Um, dinner in my house as a child was a feeling. So whoever needed to come in stumbling in late, dinner was always set aside, a plate was always left behind from whatever the rest of the family chowed down on. 
Um, and the, the only rule that we established around family dinners during the week was that somebody needed to wander into the kitchen and sit with that person. Mm-hmm. Whether it's one person or four people, doesn't matter. It's a feeling. It's a time to sit down and, and share a bit of your day over a plate of food. doesn't matter if it's been reheated in the microwave. I'm not going to fuss about it. Um, we do our best to have Sunday night dinner as a family, and that's enough for us. Yeah. Because every one of my children knows when they migrate to that table, when they get home from band practice, somebody in the home who notices them going there is going to sit down and join them. Whether they're doing their math homework beside their brother, doesn't matter. It's just that's the only rule we have in our family about family dinner. Don't oh, let anyone amazing. sit alone. Yeah. I did this last night. So my yeah. daughter gets home at eight, just after eight. Yeah. Uh, she heats up some chicken noodle soup. Yep. And, you know, normally I would go off to my office and kind of work. And, you know, it's only the two of us in the house last night. And I thought, no, I'm going to go and sit with her and talk mm-hmm. with her. And I'll, I'll tell you, it, uh, it's enough for them. It's it, enough. I, and, and then I said to her, I said, and then now we're going to uh, start doing Sunday night dinners. And she goes, Dad, what, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Everything okay? And okay. I said no. I talked to this. I talked about you. I talked to I had this amazing person today who really helped me see these things differently. Particularly, you know, you you um you mentioned that whole idea about checking resentment, and yeah. that that can happen, right? When you're kind of yeah. like zipping out all over the place That's and that sort of stuff. So, you, yeah. you, do you want to talk a little bit about that? About how you how you you know when you've got so many kids going so many places and that sort of stuff. It's like oh, another one I have to do. Like how do you how yeah. do you get past that? Well, I'm already cooking dinner for whoever is home. So why am I not still cooking the same amount as though that child that's still out of the Mm. house is going to come home and eat it? They are. Um, I don't try and feed dinner in the car. I feed protein, a protein bar, a bunch of vegetables, a piece of fruit, and I don't feel guilty about it. I don't. I don't need to. Um, What I need to pull off as a parent every day is not sending out waves of resentment. For I don't ever want my child to look at me and say, Mom's really bummed out that she has to spend time with me right now. Oh, I'm taking something yeah. away from her. That's mm-hmm. the line, though, right? Like, I guess, that, you know, yeah. you think to yourself, oh, another drive. You know, like, I'm getting older. My hips are starting to hurt sometimes yeah. when I'm doing these <laughs> long drives. I know, I know. But it's it's like, I, I know that I've been checking myself. Last year, I found, because I, I, we had, were in one uh, musical studio, and I felt every single time that I turned around, there was another small incremental cost. You know, it was a sweatshirt. Okay. It was shoes. I was like, can't you bundle this together, like, in a, in a way that it doesn't feel like every time I walk in the door, you have your hand out? And, of course, the kids hear that from time to time. Yeah. And it's like, this is not... This is not what I want to portray for them, right? I want them to just adore and just go and just have the time of their lives, make that social connection mm. and find that flow. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I have had my kids ask me about that. Mommy, you know, uh, I feel bad that you have to buy my costume. And I said, those are adult worries. And when that worry is too big for us to handle, I'll let you know. Yeah. Also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the idea of resentment that also came through on social media was, mm-hmm. but it wasn't the the child who is you know out and about you know feeling any sort of resentment towards them, but it, it was more that how the impact on um, the relationship with your partner. Um, if you're the one who is taking the lead and you're having you're in the car all the time, you're the one shuttling them to and fro. Sometimes resentment can build that you know the other partner isn't doing as much or or however that their schedule never works out and they can't do it. Um, so how how is managing it between you know partners and keeping things um, even keel between the partner and while doing all these so things? I have the kind of partner who who we sit down in the summer, we lay out what we're doing for the mm-hmm. year ahead, and we uh, we commit to flex hours. No, that doesn't come across right. He still has to show up for his out of the house job every single day. Yeah, um, he knows that like every Wednesday. I've done the drop off of those kids. You bet your bottom dollar, you better be there to pick them up because if you're not, they're not getting picked up. Ooh, okay. I'm not saving him. Mm-hmm. He knows, and he wants to make sure that his kids are being picked up every Wednesday night. It, within reason. Obviously, if it's a four o'clock pickup, he can't do it, right? Yeah. But maybe I'll ask him, you know, Wednesday I have to do pickup and drop off every Wednesday. Can you please take some time in the morning and pack the after school snack so it's ready ready for me? So that when I rush in the door at the end of the day, I can grab it and throw it in their bag and get out the door. It's a team sport. Mm-hmm. I, I love that idea of team sport. I, I'm in a unique situation, which is, you know, I have between three and six kids that I'm dealing yeah. with from three relationships. Yeah. So I remember probably about two years ago, you know, the the mom of the uh, of the now 13-year-old was having to drive from one town south up 
you know, fairly consistently to pick her up and drop her off. And at no point did it ever cross my mind that, you know, that's a lot of driving, Mm -hmm. right? It was when she said, hey, I'm doing a lot of driving here. You know, it, it was actually, it came in a, the form of a fight. And I'm like, why didn't we talk about this before? I'm, you know, I'm good for kind of, that's the thing is my actions as a, as, as dad is I will pick up and drop off. You know, if uh, one mom is, is running late in court and that sort of stuff, you know, I'm generally pretty good to be able to, to rush off and, and pick up, drop off and that sort of stuff. I don't always mm-hmm. love it because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you, know, you want to get a little bit of heads up sort of thing. But I but love I that idea of sitting down to communicate. Reactive, be proactive about it. So every yeah, exactly. day, he has to get the heck out of his office and be there for pickup. And, mm-hmm. and to, to, to drive the bargain chip up even higher, um, he also picks up someone else's child that day. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Yeah, I think that mom has driven my child to dance for me. So mm-hmm. now my husband is going to pick them both up and get them home. He's going to pay attention to that clock. And he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think what what you're saying is is that it's really that pro proactive communication, talking and setting the expectation for each other. Because a lot of times, the darn alarms and the phones, man. Like, (laughs) I don't know what I would do with those. Yeah, yeah. Because I find a lot of times resentment um, can bubble up. And the other person has no idea. Just what you were saying, Jason. They, they, they just have they they they're not in your world. They're not experiencing. Right. So they just are not aware. The, the alarms and the phone thing is interesting because what one of the things I discovered with the Amazon Echo is you can tell Alexa th- what kind of alarm. So set dance recital alarm, mm-hmm. and it, that's great because it's like you're like, what would I set that alarm for? <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, the dance recital <laughs> thing. You know, one of the things you and and this isn't a question, but now you just piqued my curiosity that you were talking about having things like the the afternoon snacks kind of in mm-hmm. order. What are some of those tips that you would offer to make these extracurriculars just more efficient, using our time to get to and from, and all that has to happen? We have a compartmentalized container for each kid, mm-hmm. and into it. If they're going straight from school to an activity or another family's picking them up, there'll be a hunk of protein, a vegetable, and a bottle of water or fruit. Oh, wow. That's it. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm taking the onus off myself to feed them dinner before they get to the activity. And you know what? They don't want to really jump around after eating a meal in yeah. a car. You know, so it's like refuel them or give them a little top up, knowing that that plate of dinner and that company at the table is going to be there for them when they get home. Yeah, we're big on smoothies. Like it's just yeah. it's, a, it's a good punch for the uh, carbo carbohydrate side. It's just like that pre like it's their, their after school container. So I'm not scrambling around. They're kind of set aside in a different cupboard. Each one of them has one, mm-hmm. and that's for after school activities. And it just gets filled, right? If we have to go straight to that activity, I grab that particular container for that particular child, fill it up with whatever I can find in the house, and out the door we go. Louise, we, we, we say this uh, many weeks because we get this opportunity mm-hmm. to talk to great people. We'd love to talk to you all day. So can you help us find you? Where do we learn more? Tell us about your blog. Tell us about what you're up to. Uh, I'm on Instagram, too, at Louise Gleason with two E. So it's L-O-U-I-S-E-G-L-E-E-S-O-N. Um, if you go there, because it's easy to navigate to, you can find all my other fancy handlebars. Mm-hmm. That's great. And I and I love sharing. You know what? It's It's village mindset right guys like I want so you to brag a little bit. Ta- kids together. That's the way it should be. But I want you to brag. You know, Washington Post article is nothing to sneeze at. Can you, you just mention the Washington Post article? You guys, everybody should go and, and check this out. Um, I, I wrote about how we've all become afraid to become that helicopter parent. We, we've all become ca- overly cautious about tough love and, and kind of stepping away from our kids and letting them flounder and fail. And I, I just talked about a personal experience where I said, you know, Forget that. I'm not going to listen to any of that chatty chat chat because right now I need to step in and and my child does need me to clear the path and and walk beside her on it. And I'm not going to get bogged down by all that judgy judge judge McTinn stuff that goes on (laughs) out there about, you know, ooh, you're rescuing your child. So what? She's mine. You know what? Yeah. I'm going to. The, oh, the article is called Resilience is Great, but Sometimes It's Okay for Parents to Clear a Path for Their Kids. Yep. Uh, it's I love it. And you're, I got to tell you, your writing was really great. I love the way that you make Thank the you. analogy that snow plows and, uh, and lawnmowers are meant for, you know, gardening, not actually for parents. It's not a good, <laughs> good piece of language you want to use. We do, you know. <laughs> yeah. They really don't. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Louise. It was You're it was welcome. a treat chatting with you. Yeah. So, you know, share your thoughts. Continue the conversation. You can join us on uh, at Parents Canada on every one of the, the social channels out there, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We'll be back with more from Parents Canada Radio on News Talk Saga 960.
Hello and welcome back to Saga 960 Parents Canada Radio. I mi- mix that up, Jason. <laughs> but here we are, we're back. And so, you know, we're, we just spoke with Louise uh, and I just loved her whole philosophy and approach to parenting. It was, no wonder she has four children. Uh, she seems very <laughs> relaxed in that she just has this perspective on it's okay. They're not really, as she said, when she used the word mistakes, she had used air quotes, uh, that there really aren't mistakes and that you can kind of keep growing and, and keep figuring things out. I really loved it. It's that opportunity in, in learning. Mm-hmm. For me, mm-hmm. you know, and, and again, I think the real, when I whenever I looked at at, uh, at extracurriculars before, I felt there was a missing piece. Okay. Like you do it because you think you have to do it. And Louise oh. really positioned it really brilliantly, which is to say they have an incredible value. And the incredible value isn't simply let's get the kids some exercise, let's expose them to mm-hmm. art and things like that. It's it's literally trying to solve and unlock the child. And yeah. Yeah, sort of yeah. Yeah, no, no I, I totally agree about that unlocking. Um, it, it's it's just a big one. It, it allows them to pull on their own strengths and they can find, figure out who they are. And, and then there's also just a sense of belonging that you belong to something, especially when it really clicks. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. The whole idea of tribe is a, is a really big thing, particularly mm-hmm. as adults and things like that. But it, it's I, the way that I'm going to approach uh, as a litmus test, the way I'll approach extracurriculars going forward is – why am I doing this? And what's you know what's the what's the value and purpose for for the little one, right? So where I might have said in the past, hey, let's put them in soccer, let's put them in swimming lessons, or along those lines. It's now it's say, well, why why are, why are we choosing those paths? Aren't there are there better paths to choose? Things that will light them up. I, I used the story with Louise yesterday that um, I learned to be a professional photographer when I was thirty five years old. So just mm-hmm. just about thirteen years ago, and I didn't go into you know like a, I didn't I didn't take it at university and things like that. I, I learned it over the internet, but it, it became that that moment of flow. I remember times where I was in my studio where I was spending three and four hours working on a lighting setup. And that's the joy that I want the child to be able mm. to kind of experience as well. And yeah. by the way, one thing I really loved about the, the choices you, you made for your kids or that your kids are indicating that they want is that you're, you have two daughters and you're moving them into the STEM range. And I love that whole oh. idea of math and things like that because... Yeah, that, that's, that's really by them um they're the ones who have pushed that um so and and they're both um you know going back to that conversation we had week months ago now about that non-gendered raising your kids i i I know that I, I had said I put my kids in dance because I thought that's what, you know, little girls needed to do. And it was after that experience and realizing my kid didn't fit that I stopped trying to fit her into, you know, what that definition of little girl is and really started to let her just define that for herself. And both of them enjoy swimming, but they really enjoy math. It's just so bonkers to me because I'm a writer. I'm not a math person. Right. And so I'm like, okay. you. And they come out of that math class. It's an hour and a half of math. And they are like excited. That's great. Which is crazy. I, my <laughs> eight-year-old uh, saw, I think it was the Lemony Snicket series. And I guess mm. somebody's a mycologist, which is a mushroom scientist. Oh, okay. So Didn't somebody recently told me about you can buy these amazing kits where mm-hmm. the child can kind of raise and grow and, and study that. So I, that's going to be one of my, my stops on the weekend is to be yeah. able to get there. Oh, so cool. you you said off the top of the show that this is the last run. It is. So yeah. I want to know what you learned. What what are you taking away from Parents Canada Talk Radio? Um, so many things. Because anytime you push yourself out of your comfort zone to do something, um, like me being on on air, I'm a writer. I like to sit behind my computer and be on my own. That in itself has just been a huge learning. Um, and then just every week, there's been I walk away with something. Um, and just talking with the experts and people who are just deep in their their area, like Louise today, it, it's just it, you walk away with just so much more. Um, but one of the things that has just for researching the show, it made me think about why I do certain things, because I think a lot of times I, I do things I, I don't I feel like they're just natural things. They just kind of flow. I, there's not a lot of. Sometimes there is thought behind it, but sometimes there's just more just action that you just have to go. There's no time to stop and think when you're a parent. Um, So this has had me stop and think a few like, why did I make those decisions? And and some have been really reinforcing and like, okay, you're you're doing okay. Um, And then others, it just gave me also a new perspective to say, well, let me think of it this way um, instead of the other. So, yeah, lots. 
Um, I love that. It's been amazing. And by the way, you're doing better than okay, right? <laughs> you know, you've got a radio show where you're helping other parents be able to unpack, you know, everything from kind of gender roles uh, yeah. to uh, you know postpartum depression, which was an incredible show, and I thought that you handled that that show with such mm. such grace. I think is the word that. Oh, thank so you. I know that yeah. I will miss my time with you oh, and yeah, learn, yeah, yeah. learning from Same you. Here. So I hope you call me from once in a while. Like I said, to happy to me. happy to come back every now and then, just on a weekly basis. It's not possible. Um, yeah. So I know that we have a lot of great stuff online. Uh, there's some resources available on parentscanada.com. So you should go and check them out. There's uh, one article. Uh, it's about how highly scheduled ki- kids still have a social, can still have a social life. Um, and then also the signs are, are you signing your kids up for too many activities that you may want to check out as well? That first article is based on a University of Toronto study that they did. Mm-hmm. And they found, you know, hey, actually the fascinating thing that they found was when kids aren't in extracurriculars, a lot of their time is screen time right now. So that extracurricular is a great way to break that up Mm -hmm. uh, as an opportunity to kind of get them to experience the world beyond the screen and the three-dimensional side. Yeah, it's that whole adage of, you know, idle hands are, um, what is it? The devil's devil's play? Devil's play, devil's worship. Yeah, something like that. Devil's worship? Wait a second. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I know it's like, my my parents used to always say idle hands. Idle hands. And so they never really finished the rest of it. You figure out the rest of it, but. (laughs) Which explains why you're a writer. Yeah. (laughs) Well, Lisa, thank you so much for uh, being an inspiration. I don't know what I'm going to do without you going forward. Uh, But uh, for everybody, hey, send a note to Lisa. Send it, you know, where where are you getting on on, uh, social media? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram at lisa.durante. But you can also come and check out my website, lisadurante.com. And I have a blog that I issue once a week and really talking about career moms and uh, how to manage life and parenting and work. Awesome. You can also find us at Parents Canada. We got the new website. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Parents Canada. I am Jason Thompson with Lisa Durante. And you've been listening to Parents Canada Talk Radio on News Talk Saga 960.